original NSX debuted more than 25 years ago and brought many technological tricks up its sleeve. Back then, those tricks were related to the construction of the body and chassis. Today, it's about electric motors, batteries, and the march of automotive progress. The original car was a harmonious connection between man and machine, while also bridging a gap between the high-performance sports cars of the day with a certain daily drivable livability. The second generation NSX looks to connect man and machine in certain ways, but it's also much more a showcase of the machine side of the equation. Surprisingly, however, the daily drivability aspect found in the original still rings true, perhaps more so. This is one hell of a machine. Despite being surrounded by lots of tech, there's still great things to be found, like tremendous steering feel. Instant throttle response in a highly engaging driving experience. There's noise, there's speed, there is drama to be found with the NSX and it is intoxicating. It pulls you in. This is one of those amazing cars where you can get in it and immediately go very, very fast. You can have lots of fun too and it behaves very much like the mid-engine supercar that it is. But there's more to the NSX. There's a lot more. That's kind of the thing you discover as you drive it. There are more motors. There's more engagement the deeper you drive into the various dynamic driving modes. There's a lot of more. It's more comfortable than you might expect. It's more livable than you might expect. This is truly the everyday supercar. These are Acura seats, which means they're comfortable and supportive. I love Acura seats, and here on the NSX, it's no different. They're just really well-made and well-tailored to blending that line between comfort and sportiness. These seats are excellent. You can pop this down into sport or quiet mode and just bring the action back a hair and commute through traffic quietly if you want to, silently when you're in full electric mode. You can drive this in EV only at speeds up to 50 miles per hour. And you just kind of sail along in this beautifully shaped machine with its flying buttresses out back. And if you need to wake up that motor, you can just grab a paddle or slap it over to Sport Plus and go. Oh my God, is there so much thrust. This car is crazy fast. Here, you'll find a twin turbocharged V6 gasoline drinking engine that pairs up with a nine speed dual clutch gearbox and sends power to the rear wheels. You'll also find a pair of electric motors set up front in a single package, with each driving one of the two front wheels when called upon. Finally, there's a direct drive motor that sits between the gas engine and that nine cog transmission and attaches directly to the crankshaft. This one sends a bit more power and torque to the rear wheels, and it also makes sure the battery gets the electron juice that it needs. Additionally, this motor eliminates the need for a traditional starter as it's used to fire up the engine. Finally, that direct drive motor has another wonderful trick up its sleeve in that it essentially works to eliminate any turbo lag. You step on the gas and you go. When everything is humming together, the combined power output is 573 horsepower and 476 pound-feet of torque. Under the skin, you'll find actively damp suspension that can behave differently depending on which drive mode you've selected. Quiet and sport keep things cozy, while Sport Plus and Track crank up the stiffness. It's never too harsh, and it's downright smooth in the softest settings. Airflow is key on the NSX. The engineers have sculpted the body to create proper downforce where needed, and also to keep thermal management in check. There are 10 heat exchangers and cooling air flows through the front grill, side intakes, and through the engine compartment itself. Also, those rear buttresses offer you the chance to say buttress 
while simultaneously looking cool and reducing drag. You experience instant G's when you punch the throttle thanks to the instant torque response that comes with three electric motors delivering all of their torque and then the engine picks up the slack from there. The transmission employed here is the world's only nine-speed dual clutch. First gear is a tall one used for ripping away from a stop up to a fun rate of speed. Gears two through seven are more close in their ratio spread so that the NSX stays in its power band. And finally, that ninth gear is for highway cruising. If you're in ninth and going 60 miles per hour, the V6 is only spinning at 1700 RPM. The driving modes are quiet, sport, sport plus, and track. In quiet, electric only driving is prioritized. Twin motor unit provides the initial launch and the engine fires up more quietly and keeps your max revs to 4,000 before shifts. The interface inside is a cool blue. In sport, you lift that 4,000 shift limit and you get a slightly more aggressive throttle map. The intake sound control system wakes up a bit and so does the active exhaust. Intake sound control directs some of the noise from the engine compartment into the cockpit space. You'll also find the interface is now gray with some red highlights. In Sport Plus, you have faster up and down shifts and you get an even more aggressive throttle map. You have max torque available from the electric motors, the steering response is retuned, the dampers are more aggressive, and the exhaust and intake open up even more. The interface is now yellow with visual feedback from the tack, and the center console glows with red highlights. To access the most aggressive setting, you have to hold the dynamic mode switch to the right for a few seconds. Now you are in track mode. Launch control is finally available when you're fully stopped. You have more feedback from the brake pedal. Your upshifts occur in 40 milliseconds and traction and stability control let you dance a bit more. You have full intake sound. The power unit retains some battery so that the NSX can deliver consistent torque and yaw control. The carbon brake rotors on this test car are 52 pounds lighter than the standard braking package. You can also see a bit more carbon sprinkled liberally throughout the vehicle. It's on the roof, it's on the chin, it's on the tail, and it's on the sides. Oh, and it's also covering the entire engine. Is this the fastest car in its class? No. Is it incredibly fast? Hell yes. Zero to 60 happens in 3.1 seconds and the top speed is around 190 miles per hour. When you leave the line, this thing goes. That's the advantage of pairing the gas engine with electric motors. What we have here is essentially a budget hypercar, relatively speaking. This car isn't cheap. The base price is $150,000. This one, as tested, is right about $200,000. All of those carbon bits add a bunch to the price. The carbon ceramic brakes are not cheap. That's how you wind up adding $50,000 worth of options to a car. But you are still nearly as expensive or even slightly cheaper than some amazing machines and just as quick. The McLaren 570 is right there, the Audi R8, the Lamborghini Huracan, all of that stuff, you're right there. But what this feels like is so much more than those cars. This feels like a McLaren P1. This feels like a Porsche 918 and a LaFerrari, a Ferrari the Ferrari. This is the future of that sort of car. Now, yes, I love a purist driving experience as much as the rest of you. Manual gearbox, rear wheel drive, engine up front. That is a recipe for driving enjoyment. But if I was in the market for a super machine that I could drive every day and then take to the track and decimate that circuit or just destroy a canyon road, it's hard to beat the Acura NSX. Damn, this thing is fast.